today we're going to look into the mystical and mm -hmm. see some visions. Hi everyone, I'm Tracy, the Gaming Maven. And I'm Stefan, the Games Teacher. And today we're going to give you a gameplay overview and review of the game Visions. So this game is kind of spooky. A little bit spooky. A little bit scary. And, and you might want to see what the items are. Maybe you want to check out the components. Maybe you want to check out some gameplay. Well, click on the timestamp below. If you like what you see, leave us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. And subscribe to be notified when we post new content. And with that, we're going to check out Visions. In Visions, the objective is to be the player who earns the most mental influence points by playing your time cards in order to break the Yates family curse. Here we have the components for Visions. First we have our time cards, and the time cards do have different face values. We have our family cards, which include rooms, places, jewels, and ancestors. We have our player boards, we have our mental influence board, we have our player markers, we have our vision stones in the three colors, green, white, and black. We have a draw bag. We also have our vision cards, our center card, and in this case we do have the deluxe edition expansion, prediction expansion, and we also have the deluxe player mat. We will start set up by each player receiving one of their player, one of the player boards, and they're going to, uh, for the first game, choose the A side. There, it is double side. There's the B side as well. Then each player will take their six markers. They will play one on each of the track, one on the master vision track, and one on the mental influence board. In this case, the mat has the mental influence board. Next, we're going to shuffle all of the vision cards and deal each player's, or, sorry, time cards, and each player will receive six of the time cards. They'll also receive a vision card, and again, they will choose the A side versus the B side, which can be used in later games. Next, all the family cards will be shuffled together and placed out in kind of a bit of a star shape. So the center card is going to go in the center, and again, we're using the playmat for uh, visual aid. Uh, without the mat, you basically play out one to each corner of the um, center card and then one above those cards. The rest of the time cards and vision cards are placed to the side. And then each card that is out, each family card, has a cube on it. So it'll have a white, a green, a black, or a, 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 a cube that has the three colors. In this case, you're going to draw out double the amount that's there. So there might be more than one cube here. So you'll draw two or four. Or in, in this case, you'll actually draw randomly. So normally you would match the color. In the case of the multicolored cube, you would draw randomly from the bag. Now we are ready to begin. On a player's turn, each player has both optional and mandatory actions that they must do. Players may choose to look at their time cards and play one or more time cards out. What you are doing, um, if there is no cards in any of the available spots, you only have to match the number of cards showing. However, if there were cards out played by a previous player, you have to add a card for each previous player that is played there. So I would be looking at my cards and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to connect one of these four cards to the center card. So I would play out two cards with hands on the clock that go from the card I'm trying to collect from to the center card. In this case, I do, and there are two of them. So I would first get to collect one of the cubes there, and I would have to place it on my vision card. I must play it in one of the white spots. And where you play is very important because if you fill up a row, either a horizontal or vertical row, you will immediately score those and clear those. So if you're trying to uh, receive uh, five points instead of two, you're actually trying to complete two rows by placing a single cube down at one point that will complete those two rows. So playing becomes very strategically important. Next, you will then move up on one of the tracks. So you do have tracks that match each of the four types of family cards. The type of card you 
collected from is the track that you go up on. So in this case, I went on a location here, so I would move up two as per the number. These tracks become very handy because then you can choose to use the visionary energy on these cards to make changes. If you look at, there's a couple of symbols here. We have minus one card, minus three cards. This allows us to play one less card than necessary should we spend visionary energy. The uh, starburst here is basically vic uh, um, mental influence points, or what is also known as victory points. And then we also have 1M, which is master track. So that basically allows us to simply move up on the master track. We'll kind of explain how that works in a second. We also have a two, a two cube. So basically the cube allows us to have, collect an extra cube from the card. When you want to spend the visionary energy to enhance your turn, you have to spend equal to the spot that that benefit is on. So let's say, for example, I was here at five on the room track. If I wanted to spend one less card on my turn, I could spend one, two, because it is in the second location on the track. Optionally, I could spend four of the visionary energy on this track to get two victory points. And then it would move me up two. You never necessarily have to go all the way down to zero, but you do have to spend equal to the spot where the track is. You can be above it or on it. If you're below it, you obviously can't spend because you don't have enough visionary energy at that point to spend that. Then you can build up again. Playing time cards and using visionary energy are optional actions. However, when you receive vision stones, that is a non-optional, so you must use them, uh, place them on the vision card or use them for the master vision. Master Vision has victory points on each spot along that track. As you move up that track, you will immediately gain those mental influence or victory points. What will happen is, should I collect three white, since the next spot on my track is white, the I could spend these three cubes instead of collecting the points to move up the track. Now I only get one point for that, but later on I can get as many as six points for a single jump from the next spot to the, the top spot. So you may wish to trade in the, the, the points you may get from this track to go up the master vision track. A player may also choose to try to connect the outside card. The four corner cards are easy to connect and only requires a card directly from that card to the center card. To connect this outer card, you need to create a path from this card to the center by connecting to one of those outside cards. So you, you can connect it. This card is virtually here, here, and here as well. So if we had cards in these spots connecting one of these cards to the center, we could possibly connect that card that way as well. In this case, I would need to put a card here that connects from this card to this card and then into the center from this card. You also again need the amount of points, amount of cards for per the card. So if we have four cards that have the direction that connects this card to the center, a player can then take the action of this card, which is to collect a green cube and go five up on the location track. Once all four spots where time cards can be played are filled up, they will actually be cleared and moved to the discard pile. This makes playing to the locations a little bit easier because otherwise a player would have to play an extra card or possibly multiple cards to play in any of the spots. A card has either two or four cubes on it. Once all the cubes have been removed from the card, the card may be played and connected to the center one final time. When that happens, the player will then draw the color cube from the bag, playing it onto their vision card. And then this card will be removed and replaced with a new card. And the cubes will be added again. So in this case, it is only a single icon. So you place two white cubes on that card. 
During the game, when the first player to reach 20, 30, or 40 mental influence points, then an event will be triggered. The player who is in the worst position, which is determined by mental influence and other factors, will choose one of the visionary energy tracks to trigger. All other players besides that player will have to move down the track two spots. Now all players, including the worst position player, will have to take the marker from that track replace it with a white, green, or black cube and play it to one of the dotted spots on their vision card. In addition to the three dots in the 3x3 three three grid, there is also a spot above the card. Players could choose to play their first or future player markers there instead without affecting their 3x3 three three grid. Once they play their player marker into the 3x3 three three grid, that spot can no longer, that row that that spot is in can no longer be used to count the mental influence. You cannot use them to collect mental influence. However, it does count as a permanently covered spot for that color for your master vision. So if you are looking to collect that color, to move up on the track, that spot is covered for the purposes of moving up on the Master Vision track. This will now make the that energy track, visionary energy track, more expensive by one. So depending upon where the track, the spot in the track is you're looking to benefit, in this case two, four, or six, you need to actually spend an additional visionary energy. So you need to spend three. So you need to at least be above that spot on the energy track to be able to even trigger that spot. The game ends when one player meets or surpasses the 40 mental influence points. The mental influence event is triggered as it is with 20 and 30 again. And then all players have one more turn so that every player has an equal number of turns so it returns to where the starting player would have begun a new round. The game then ends and the person with most influence points wins the game. So now we're ready to give our review of Vision. So Stefan, what did you think? I liked it. Good. I liked it. Um, I did find some of the rules were a little bit uh, difficult to assimilate at first, but once I got a few rounds in, it seemed to work pretty well. Mm -hmm. Now I learn by reading rule books mm -hmm. and then other people learn by doing. So for me, yes, I found the rule book. I was stumbling through a lot of it. And until I started playing the game, I didn't understand. Usually. I can understand from our rule book. Had a lot of jargon that seemed unnecessary. However, the gameplay, once we got into it, it mm -hmm. seemed smooth and I really enjoy the actual game mechanics and the gameplay itself, so that's great. So art and theme. Uh, I found the art to be a little on the dark side, but that wasn't a bad thing in that it helped to convey the, the theme of the yeah. game, the overall mood, so. Yeah, the um, art for me, again, I, I kind of like the whole old like portrait style of the, the people. The locations seemed a little odd. They almost seemed a little too realistic compared to everything else, which is a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, art-based versus like realistic photo-based. But I, I still quite liked it, and you're right. It was dark, but it suited the thing. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing I will f say about the art is the clock faces. Really cool, and I see how they can add to the theme. But I got really confused, because all you really need is a 90 degree angle. Yeah. So I paid attention to the little clock in the top left hand corner instead of the big clock, because I just got confused because uh, 12.45 is the same as 9 o'clock. It's just small hand versus large hand, but it's just that 90 degree angle you're looking for. So I kind of found it a little unnecessary, but I could see how it helped with the theme. Right. So having just like a right angle doesn't seem very perfect. Uh, something one of our uh, people we were playing with mentioned that it's kind of a bit of a pace it on theme. Mm. How do you feel about that? Um, you know, the game mechanics could work with a number of different themes. Um, this is the theme they chose. So, you know, in that sense, yes, uh, maybe the theme is a little bit pasted on, but uh, I felt it, it worked to convey the, the overall mood of the game. Yes, again, I, I, I think the whole feel of the game, like everything was consistently thematic mm -hmm. with that theme. Mm -hmm. The theme didn't really go with the mechanics, but the theme was consistent throughout the game cards and all that stuff. So I like that aspect. I'm just not really sure that it, the, the theme really applied to the game mechanics per se, mm -hmm. but it was, it was good otherwise than that. So the copy we got was a prototype, mm -hmm. so we can't mention necessarily components. However, it came with a map. 
Again, I seem to, I'm, I'm starting to love mats. I'm not usually a mat girl, but these We don't mats. buy a lot of mats, but last, lately we've acquired a few. And the mat on this is, is really well done, actually. The mat on this is really done, and it, I feel it's kind of necessary to help people with the mechanics. So, not necessarily for the ones in the center, but because you sometimes try to connect that top card with the other, the, with the, the center, the edges, yeah. you're, you need that, that, and I find the mat really helps mm -hmm. with that aspect. That's really all it does but it does it really well and it's very helpful for people to visualize that if they can't already. So I like it, very solid. And it, again, it suited the, the art on it suited. So I it's good. I completely agree. <laughs> so game mechanics. Um, like I said earlier, the game mechanics initially were a little bit difficult for me to assimilate, but three or four rounds in, I was like, oh, okay, that's that's what we're trying to achieve. I mm -hmm. get it now, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they're, I guess a lot of people were kind of hooked uh, um, when we played it, people were getting hooked up on the idea of actions, like there's multiple actions. There's not really multiple actions. There's two mandatory things you have to do mm -hmm. and two optional things you have to do, but they aren't individual actions per se. They're just things you can do on your turn. You have a turn and these are the things you can do on your turn. Some are required, some are not. And some people got a little confused sometimes with that needing to do these optional actions and I'm like, no, you don't have to do those. So it was a little tricky, but it wasn't the game's fault. I think it was just it we're so used to playing actions on your turn yeah. that that was a little tricky. Once you kind of got used to that, um, it was really good. I loved like you had to decide, do you want to help bring your master vision to mm -hmm. life and gain a, a larger amount of points by mm -hmm. going further up it, um, gain points on the, the vision card. So you're trying to get like rows, uh, vertical or horizontal rows, and you have to kind of balance those two and decide which way you want to go. So I really like that aspect and trying to find the way to connect cards with what you've got. I really quite like that. So um, similar similar games. This is kind of where I am a little stumped because it is a fairly unique. Like there are other games where yeah. you're connecting things and stuff like that. I mean the theme of Visions, you know, Mysterium, which has a similar overall theme, but mechanically nothing alike. Mm -hmm. no. So I can't really think of any games that really are similar to this, to be honest. Yeah, it, it's kind of um, like a, the connect card connection mm -hmm. game, and I don't know if you call it an engine builder, but yeah, it's, it's fairly unique. I'm sure there are games, so if anyone can watch our gameplay or overview and see if they think a game matches, it'd be cool to see what you think. So uh, final, final opinion of the game. Uh, I enjoyed the game. I would l l like to play it uh, a few more times and see, you know, uh, if my opinion of the game changes over the course of time. Uh, we have played it a few times, and you know, I've enjoyed what I've seen so far. Um, yeah, I, I, I will definitely play it again when it hits the table. Yeah, because if you play it with different people, you're having to kind of teach them the rules. So I'm still a little like, especially when you hit that 20, 30, 40, and there's that kind of like that. I'm still, I still kind of find that a little less intuitive, mm -hmm. but it's not that it's bad, it's just I'm still, I still have to like refer to the rule book to look at it, so as we play it more, it'll become a little more solid. Mm -hmm. But even from the very first gameplay, I, like, my, our, 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 our fellow players kind of looked at me, they're like, yeah, you like this game, because I kind of had this like little smile on my face the whole way through the game. I was really enjoying it. So this is a, definitely a win for me, and just the more I played it, the more it's kind of solidified my enjoyment of this game. I, I really quite enjoy it. It's not a game I would bring out for everyone, because it is uh, got a bit of a learning curve, but once you got it, it's it's pretty smooth. So yeah. And with that, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.